Welcome to the Fed Life Podcast with Dan Seip from Serving Those Who Serve. In this podcast, Dan draws from years of financial experience to help federal employees overcome challenges that every Fed can relate to. Join us for this journey as we reach, teach, and serve to help you make the right financial decisions. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Fed Life Podcast. Once again, I am your host, Dan Seip. Additionally, I'm the branch manager here at Serving Those Serving Lee Seip and Associates, beginning, as I always do, by saying thank you. Thank you for taking the time to listen, and most importantly, thank you for your service to the government, to the country, to me, to everyone. You do not hear that enough. You will always hear it here. Uh, Ed Zerndorfer is back with us once again. Yes, the guru is here as part of our ongoing mission to reach, teach, and serve you. If you're a regular listener, you'll know what I'm going to say next which is at the outset, I need to say that the opinions of our guest Ed Zarndorfer are not the opinions of Raymond James or serving those who serve. This podcast is prevented, presented for information only and is not intended to be taken as advice. All listeners can, should consult their personal advisors before taking any action. If you do not have a personal advisor, hit us up at serving those who serve. That's stwserve.com. We will help you any way we can. Uh, as usual, we will follow Ed's Fed Zone article uh, to sort of amplify them, give us one more way to reach and teach. Uh, I will remind you again of our weekly serving. Uh, every week, we deliver the best of Ed, uh, Jennifer Meyer, Ed's one our partner, Benef Benefits Ben, uh, Wes Battle. We've got a ton, so don't miss out. See the subscription information on our YouTube page for the podcast, or you can also pop over to stwserve.com. Nice little pop-up will come up and allow you to do that. So Ed, we uh, we are we are extending a bit talking taxes, but in a very different way. So we'll begin with some special tax provisions for feds from Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and then subsequent we will tackle an issue Ed uncovered with Roth conversions directly from TSP. So folks, I cannot stress it enough this time. Head over to the Fed Zone. That's Fed-Zone.com and pull up Ed's articles because the tables will be incredibly helpful for you. So, Ed, kick us off here. Pennsylvania and New Jersey handle TSP contributions and distributions differently from a state income tax basis. So what's up there? Okay, Dan, I just want to say something in general regarding the TSP and taxes. We just finished tax uh, tax season tax preparation season for the 2022 federal and state income taxes. I mm -hmm. have an accounting and tax practice yep. and I'm doing right now at this point, what I call damage control. What yeah. happened during tax season that can affects federal employees and federal retirees. I came across two items that I want to share with the listeners that will hopefully help them in the future because they may run into this problem. These, some of these problems. Okay, and that's why I wrote these 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 uh, problems up in in the Fed Zone. And as you say, Dan, I encourage listeners to go to the Fed Zone, www.fed-zone.com, mm -hmm. and those articles appeared um, in April, April 2022. I think one was April 19th, and the next one will be coming out very shortly, the last yep. week of April. Okay, so let's talk about the first issue was New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And yeah. it led me also to give a general discussion about the state tax treatment of TSP. There's not a lot of information out there, gotcha. out there uh, for federal retirees. As you know, Dan, federal retirees are all over the place. They're in right. 50 states. They are over overseas. And invariably, federal employees um, uh, take money. They're going to take money out of their, their TSP and... The federal, in terms of federal right. tax treatment, it's pretty obvious. The IRS has rules and so on. But um, when it comes to states, it's a it's a little bit it's a little complicated. And if federal employee reti federal employees retirees do their own taxes, it's going to be our challenge. But also tax professionals, and I I know several tax professionals. Um, they are they are also a little complex uh, about how the state the states. Um, tax uh, t treat TSP withdrawals and, and rollovers and things like that. So I thought it was very important to just give some some information that it's a heads up for federal employees, retirees to be aware 
of some of the possible problems you're going to run into when it comes to the state tax treatment um, and rollover provisions of the TSP, um, term, in particular, the, the, when it comes to convert, uh, transferring traditional TSP to a Roth IRA. And those are the issues we're going to be covering today. All right, so let's talk about New, let's talk about um, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Yep. Okay. First of all, we have to talk about the um, general income tax treatment. Income tax treatment. Um, when one contributes to the traditional, I emphasize the word traditional TSP. As you know, there are two types of TSP accounts. One is the traditional, that's the original one started back in 1987, and the other one is the raw TSP. So right now we're going to be talking about the traditional TSP. So with the traditional TSP, all contributions that an employee makes uh, come from their gross salary, from their gross salary. So for example, suppose a federal employee um, has a salary of, let's take 100000 Dan, $100,000. And they want to put $10,000 into the traditional TSP. Again, it's all done by v payroll deduction. So what's going to happen, Dan, is the $10,000 that's going to go in traditional TSP will be deducted from their gross salary, leaving them a taxable salary of 90000 mm -hmm. 90000 and then the money goes into the traditional TSP account, into the various funds, T C S I F and G fund, maybe the L funds, maybe some of the mutual funds, uh, the, the, the new mutual fund window, accrues earnings. Everything is growing. The, con the contributions are growing. The earnings are, are growing. Everything is growing. What's called tax deferred. What do I mean by tax deferred? That only the only time taxes have to be paid is when withdrawals, distributions are made from the traditional TSB, and that normally is going to be after age 55. So you're getting tax deferred, what I call compound growth. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty. It's a pretty simple formula here. Money goes in, contributions go in on a tax deductible basis. They come out fully taxable, fully taxable. That gotcha. is That's on the federal side. There are, I believe, seven states in this country that have no income taxes. I should say, state and local income taxes, including Florida, Texas, New Hampshire, Tennessee, South Dakota, Wyoming, the state of Washington, and Alaska. Those are the states that have no income taxes. So if a federal employee, a federal employee lives in one of those states and is contributing to the TSP as a state resident, there is absolutely no tax consequences because they have no state income tax. The gotcha. only thing they only have to worry about federal taxes. But if a federal employee lives in one of the other 43 states that have income taxes, then in most of these states, the state tax treatment regarding contributions to traditional TSB are identical to the federal. So, for example, I live in Maryland. When I was a federal employee, I contributed to traditional TSB. So my state tax treatment of any money I put into the TSP was identical to the federal. Namely, I put if I put ten thousand dollars into the to the to to the um, traditional TSP, my salary was one hundred thousand. My federal taxable salary was ninety thousand, and so was my Maryland my Mar Maryland salary. And then when I took the money out of the TSP, I have to pay both federal and state income tax. That's assuming. Once again, that I'm living in Maryland when I put the money in and when I take the money out. That's mm. important. That's a that's an important thing. One of the many questions I get, uh, Dan, during our, our webinars, Ed, Ed, I don't understand what's going to happen when I retire. How am I, I going to have to pay state tax on this? Yeah. According to what rate? Well, it depends where you're living, where you're sure. living. If you if you live here in Maryland, you decide I'm going to retire to Florida. I'm going to become a Florida resident. Well, when you take the money out of the TSP, why are you in Florida? You won't have to pay any state income tax. All right. So let's talk about two states. There may be others. I'm not aware of, but I'm most familiar with New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And one of my tax clients this year took money out of the TSP as a New Jersey resident. He mm -hmm. contributed to the TSP all these years as a New Jersey resident. So here's the tax situation when it comes to New Jersey and Pennsylvania. 
The contributions that you make to the traditional TSP are made with after-tax dollars, after-tax salary. Get back to my example. So my client has a hundred thousand dollar New Jersey salary, um, SF fifty salary. That's what his gross salary is for the year. He contributes ten thousand traditional TSP. Federal taxable wages reduced to ninety thousand. State New Jersey state tax state taxable wages remain at one hundred thousand dollars. There's no they they have to pay tax on the contributions. And a lot of New Jersey residents, as well as Pennsylvania residents, that's identical in Pennsylvania, are very upset about that. Why do I have to pay tax on my on, on my on my contribution to traditional TSP? That's not fair. That's not fair. After all, if I lived in Maryland, I lived in Delaware, I wouldn't have that treatment. Well, you're right, except for one fact. The good news is when you pull those money, when you pull that traditional TSP money out, let's say after you retire and you're living in New Jersey. Or you're, and, and you know, and you, and you and you put the money in New Jersey. Then, on the contribution portion of your withdrawals from the traditional TSB, you won't have to pay tax again. You already paid the tax on the contributions to New Jersey. New Jersey is not going to come back and say, "Okay, we want tax again." They can't, they can't double tax you, but only on the contributions, the earnings you accrued in your traditional TSB account while a New Jersey resident were growing tax deferred, but the contributions. It was already taxed. Identical gotcha. when it comes to the raw TSP. With the raw TSP, that's both federal and state. The contributions you make are also made with after-tax dollars. The difference is with the raw TSP, when you pull the money out, it's so a qualified distribution. Everything coming out of the raw TSP for federal and state tax purposes is tax-free. So we're not talking about the raw TSP now. We're talking about traditional TSP. Gotcha. So that sort of calms these Pennsylvania and New Jersey residents down a little bit, knowing that they want to pay tax on the end. Sure. But, but Dan, there's a very important assumption here, though. Those, and go ahead. I was going to say, and that is? <laughs> and that is the following. Take my client. My client. He put, he contributed to the traditional TSB all these years as a New Jersey resident. And then he retired. He retired three years ago. And Last year, he decided he he wanted to buy a new home, a new vacation home. So he took a lump sum withdrawal from his traditional TSP account, around three hundred thousand dollars, and he paid. And he took he had a he he withheld a lot of federal income tax. You can request a federal income tax withholding um, when it comes to uh, traditional TSP withdrawals. The TSP will withhold federal taxes at, w at whatever rate you request. But they will do nothing with state, nothing gotcha. with state. So he gives me his taxes, and I'm looking at his 1099R from the TSP. A 1099R reports a distribution from a retirement plan, in this case, the TSP. It shows gross distribution, Dan, of 300000 Yep. Taxable distribution. This is for federal, three hundred thousand dollars. What type of distribution? A normal distribution. It was not early. He was he was sixty years old. No problem. What about state tax distribution? It's blank. Ooh. Doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you. I, I see the problem. And then it has state. NJ, New Jersey, because my client lives in New Jersey. All right. So he comes to me with his taxes. And I said to him, Frank, did you take $300,000 of your TSP? He sure, sure did. And Ed, I was so good. I listened to you. I told, I, 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 I told the TSP, you have to take out 30% in federal income taxes. I wanted to make sure I was covered. Because I figured this is going to push me into a higher tax bracket. Well, you did the right thing. But Frank, what happened to state? Well, I don't know. At the time I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Well, maybe you should have called me. Mm -hmm. because now we got a little problem. Now we got a little problem. Because when I input this 1099R, 300000 
it's going to be, according to this 1099R, taxable the full amount in federal and New Jersey. In New Jersey. The New Jersey tax rate, um, uh, Dan, is 8%. Let's do the math together here. What is 8% of $300,000? Uh, 24000 Yeah, which he didn't have. He didn't pay estimated taxes. And I notify him about this, and he get, and he, he nearly fall, he falls falls down. I owe twenty four thousand. I don't blame him. I don't owe. I I don't know. I don't owe. I I owe twenty four thousand just in New Jersey, just based on the TSB loans that that withdrawal. I says yeah. What am I going to do? I said you got to pay it, but there's going to be a penalty. However, Frank, I know a little bit. Thing, I know I know a little bit about New Jersey. The way they treat contributions to the TSP. And that is, are you aware of the fact, Frank, that when you were contributing all these years to the TSP while a New Jersey resident, that you made those contributions to the TSP with after state New Jersey tax at taxes withheld? I didn't realize that. Therefore, the portion of the three hundred thousand dollar distribution that you made the contribution portion of that 300,000 will not be taxed again oh that's good news that makes me that makes me feel good i said only a, there's a problem here though frank i have no idea how much did you contribute to the tsp as a new jersey resident i don't know well a little birdie went off in my in my head. I said, the TSP has a record. Are you aware of the fact that the TSP has a record of the contributions you made and where you made them? Where you made them? Oh, I didn't know that. He says, yeah, they know where you live when you put the money in. And if you request that information, they have it. And get it to me, I'll be able to do your taxes and you'll owe a lot less in New Jersey taxes. Well, my client, Frank, got on the phone with the TSP and said, I need a breakdown of my contributions to, tr to, to the traditional TSP. And that includes what I contributed via payroll deduction, the accrued earnings, agency matching, because he's a FERS employee, and the agency 1% of gross pay um, uh, contribution. Because of all those items, Frank's contributions were already taxed from Jersey tax purposes. Well, Frank got on the phone, and I believe it was March, March, March the 3rd, and I waited, I waited, Two weeks later, he said, they're still working on it. They're still working on it. Finally, on I think it was April the 3rd, Frank calls me and says, they, they mailed it to me. I have it. I was able to do Frank's taxes, federal and state, New Jersey. It was a little complicated. It's not an easy thing to figure out how much of Frank's um, uh a three hundred thousand dollar TS withdrawal is fully ta is taxable for New Jersey tourism. It took some work. You got to use something called the general rule. The general rule, which mm -hmm. I recommend that the average person should not do. Average for federal retired, you 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 should not. You should go to a tax professional. Tax professional. Gotcha. It's not that easy. Bottom line is for uh, uh um, bottom line Dan is that when I did when I did the calculation, I saved um. I saved Frank about eight thousand dollars worth of New Jersey taxes. Oh, nice! So he was very happy. But I think there's a point here. There's a couple points here I want to make about this whole experience. That it would be very, very nice if the TSP knows someone was contributing to the TSP while a New Jersey resident or a um, a Pennsylvania resident to give them a breakdown 
of their contributions while they were such residents so that if they remain Pennsylvania or New Jersey residents, that they will know that not all of their withdrawals are subject to New Jer Pennsylvania and New Jersey taxes. Gotcha. There's another point I'd like to make here. Let's suppose Frank decided after he retired, he's going to move to Delaware, close by state. Gotcha. Okay. And now he's going to take the money out of his TSP account. Okay. He's going to take the money out of his TSP account as a new Delaware resident. Well, for federal tax purposes, there's no problem. It's the same thing. But what about state tax purposes? As a Delaware resident, would, would now, would Frank have to pay the full income tax, state income tax, Delaware tax on his TSP withdrawals? I'm going to bet yes. And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Because Delaware never taxed those contributions. Remember, Frank made those contributions as a New Jersey resident. And people say to me, well, wouldn't Delaware give, give him a, ta a tax credit, a state tax credit? No, it doesn't work that way. I have several clients who have several, you know, you have investments in various states. And yes, there is something called ta state tax credits, but that wouldn't apply here. He's going to have to bite the bullet, Frank, and pay Delaware tax on the same contributions he'd pay New Jersey tax with no credit. He's going to be, in a sense, double taxed Ouch. when it comes to uh, state taxes. Now, it could work the other way, too. Let's suppose we have a federal employee who contributed to the traditional TSP while a California resident. Okay. Dan, any idea what the taxes are in California? I'm going to say higher than 8%. Uh, how about trying 13%? Ouch. Okay. Here, all these years you contributed while you lived in LA, San Francisco, San Diego, whatever, San Diego, whatever, wherever you were working. And you contributed um, thousands and thousands of dollars into the traditional TSP. And you saved 13% almost in federal taxes and state income uh, uh, state income taxes when you contribute to traditional TSP. Gotcha. Well, guess what? California is just can't, can't wait for you to retire to, to, in California. When you take the money out of traditional TSP, in the traditional TSP, because at that point, California will get its money back when you take sure. the money out. Sure. Well, then, and this is this is true of what happened in past years, that many, many California residents, because of the high cost of living there, retired to Nevada. I forgot to mention, Nevada is another state that has no state income tax. Gotcha. So the question, Dan, I have is, can California, let's say, come over, if, you, if this is such a, let's say an individual, federal employee, contributed all these years to the traditional TSP, put thousands and thousands of dollars to the traditional TSP, got a state tax break from California, and then they, when they retire, move to Nevada, can California come over to the state line and say, now we want our money back, now that you're taking money out? Can I'm gonna, do that? I'm going to bet they can't, Ed. On, on behalf of our feds, I'm pushing my chips in on that and saying no. So so what's the answer? Well, it used to be that way. Oh, boy. Brief history, brief history lesson here, Dan. Back in the 70s, 80s, there were many state workers in New York New York has a very good pension system. New York has a high income tax. And they contributed to their 401k, 403b plans, other like SEP IRAs. And they put the money in on a pre-tax basis. They contributed pre-tax federal and, and New York. And then many of these employee, individuals retired and moved to 
Florida, no income sure. tax. Sure. The same thing was true also with California. Workers like Boeing, comp, don't the Boeing company, 401k plan, put money into the 401k plan all those years as California residents, and then move to um, Nevada. Well, New York and California went after these retirees to get those tax dollars back. And that was happening for many, many years until 1995. At that time, Congress passed a law called the Pension Source Law, which stated the following, that a state cannot legally go after a former resident who had contributed on a pat on a on a on a on a uh, to a retirement plan in which they got a state tax break now they cannot come back after them to get their tax dollars back and that has been the law since now it's been on the books now for almost 28 years okay so that's reassuring to know that you don't have to worry that 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 the state you put the money in will come after you but it can work the other way too it worked the other way too because if you retire, if let's say you contributed to the TSP, I, I've been many times done, done seminars for federal employees in Alabama, Alabama, Alabama taxes are uh, income taxes are not that bad, maybe four or 5% that much. And you put the money in to the traditional TSP there and you're getting a, a state tax break as well as federal. But then you decide you want to retire to the big town. You want to go to New York. And you take the money out of your TSP. What's gotcha. the tax? What's the tax rate in New York, Dan? Uh, I'm going to say it's probably close to that thirteen uh, percent. A little less, ten ten percent, ten percent. Okay. Uh, and that's assuming you're not in New York City. If you're in New York City, you can add another three percent. Then, sure. Local tax. So once again, it works both ways. And let me just say one more thing about this for, for federal employees as well as uniform services members because remember if you are um a member of the uniform services and you go on active duty let's say you're in the reserves and you and you can you can contribute to the traditional tsp you can con you can contribute to the traditional tsp because the, t the uniform services have their own tsp account Mm -hmm. And your compensation, your compensation, you know, you're earning a while on active duty goes into the traditional TSP tax deductible, depending on, you know, both federal and and state, depending on what state resident you are in. And then when you take the money out, depends where, again, where you retire, where you are, where you are, where you um, retire to your state of legal residence. So you have to weigh this. You have to weigh this. One of, this is one of the issues that I get, you know, regarding which TSP account should I contribute to? Should I contribute to the traditional TSP where I have to worry about taxes um, or the back end when I take the money out? And I emphasize, yeah, both federal and state. Or should I put money into the raw TSP in which I don't have to worry about taxes at all when I take the money out because there are no taxes. Sure. And, they, and people are just... Many times employees are just saying they're only concentrating on the federal. You have to also consider the state tax treatment of the state that you plan to retire to. Because gotcha. you could end up paying more taxes than, than necessary, and that means less TSP. With the raw TSP, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about the back end. You got to worry a little bit on the front end because the money that you put in there you contribute to the raw TSP on an after-tax basis, mm -hmm. so you do have to worry about your tax, your 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 marginal tax bracket on the front end. On the front end, but you don't have, and then you contribute, but not on the back end. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, Ed, uh, this really seems like kind of kind of a big deal. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a, a question here. Um, how how often do you think this this gets missed? with somebody doing their own taxes or or working with a tax preparer that may not, you know, someone in, in Pennsylvania or New Jersey, you know, they're not exactly at the epicenter like like we are here in, in the DMV. You know, do you think this gets missed? Yes, I really do, Dan. I okay. really do. I really do. For a variety of reasons. First of all, people do their own taxes. They can't possibly know about all the laws involved. Sure. Okay. 
um, a TurboTax, which is a good program, I'm not, I'm, you know, for an individual to do, it's not going to say, where do you live? Um, where did you put the money in? Where did you, where did you, um, where you, where, when you take the money, when you put the money into the TSB, what state were your resident? Um, and then now that you're, now that you're living in, in a different state, do you, are you aware of the fact that it may not be taxable for state tax purposes, part of your, your distribution? They're not going to ask those type of questions. Gotcha. You got to be totally up on it. Sure. You know, that was going to be my next question, Ed, you know, because TurboTax uh, is is ubiquitous now. Uh, and it just answered it. it it's it's not going to catch it. It's not going to give you a little pop-up screen that that says, I see you're in New Jersey. Did you work your whole career as a federal employee in New Jersey? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is I important. Think it, it, it's very important. It's very, it's very important that... Uh, I always say that when someone retires from federal service, or let's say um, they, they also all have to worry about their uniform services TSP if they if they have if they have money in the uniform services account, that they really need to speak with a qualified accountant who is totally up when it comes to withdrawals from the traditional TSP. They're totally aware of it. Now, am I saying that you have to find somebody who is an expert on on um, every state's income taxes? I'm not. Sure. But I will tell you that I have a colleague. I have a colleague, a fellow accountant. And she does not live in this area, but I'm in contact. I think she's uh, she's out in Kansas City. And her practice is is she she special she specializes on every state. She's a she's a guru when it comes to state income taxes on how wow. the states, and I contact her if I have questions. And someone who goes to a professional accountant should, you know, you know, who wants to get their um, uh, income taxes prepared, their federal retiree, maybe that's the person you need to go to. Someone who says, okay, I'm not aware of it, but I'm willing to contact someone who is. Sure. No, that, that makes sense. And realistically, I, I know that most of the people that are going to be listening to this are probably from New Jersey and Pennsylvania or have some connection to the state. So folks, I, I do this from time to time. I, I am deputa deputizing our listeners. So if you're in New Jersey uh, or PA, share this, share this, share this. Let people let people know because you, you heard it from Ed and it's what I was suspecting. You know, TurboTax isn't going to, uh, isn't going to pop up the window to, uh, to walk you through it. And it's just too important. And you know, yes, we write a ton for feds, but we also read a ton for feds. And I haven't encountered, I haven't encountered any articles on, on this thus far. So now that we're getting it out there, it's going to be out there in print. It's going to be here on the podcast. Ed has now, uh, cause, cause I'm his partner in crime sometimes on the, uh, uh, on the webinars. I know he's, I know he's mentioning it there. Too important, too important make sure you uh you you pass it around uh so ed what what are your final thoughts on this for our folks um one other thing one other item i'd like to add uh, sure. opportunity for feds uh when it comes to tax planning for federal retirement um we have uh, again i always say it, i'm sure it's okay i want to i want to advertise again our plenty away, month, plenty away. our monthly tax planning for retirement webinar Serving those who serve, we have webinars every month. Some of which we give every month, and the one we and one of the ones we give every month is entitled "Tax Planning for uh, Federal Retirement," and that includes we have discussions about the federal tax treatment. We have time also. We also talk about the state tax tra treatment. Um, and I emphasize read read the read these two columns. Spread the word. Um, it's very important that feds be totally aware of what's out there. And um, we're here to help. We're here to help. Absolutely. Um, and I also, Ed, as you know, like to, wherever possible, leave, leave with an action item for, for folks to remember. So for our feds who work their careers in PN New Jersey and they're retiring in PN New Jersey, they need to know that they need to request from TSP a breakdown. Now, do they do that with each withdrawal or do they do that basically the when they retire and say, Hey, give me a breakdown for my whole TSP. So what's, what's the way they should go about it. 
they should go about it, Dan. Once they retire, once they have retired from federal service, they should request from the TSP a breakdown of all the years they contributed to the TSP, both raw, I guess Roth, I guess Roth, and but separately, especially traditional, a breakdown of their contributions and um, a, and a breakdown of their tr traditional TSP um, account consisting of contributions they made via payroll deduction okay. for FERS employees. For FERS employees, it would be also include the matching contributions that the agency made. That's fully taxable, federal and state. Yep. The 1% of Rose pay, that's the SF50 salary that was made on behalf of the first employee all those years. And also earnings. What were all the accrued earnings all these years? Got it. That should be that should be the breakdown. Um now, as far as you know, giving them a breakdown what state they lived in, I think the I think the that they may not do that. The employee has to re sort of reconcile that himself or herself, where they were living all these years as a federal employee, and made, made those contributions. They 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 would they would have to be able to um, uh, reconcile in their mind where they were living when they contributed to the TSB, um, so that they'll have a, a better idea. Now, if they lived in Pennsylvania all those uh, not all those years, and now retirement Pennsylvania, that's good. Same sure. thing with New Jersey. Also, there may be other states I'm not aware of who treat contributions to the traditional TSP the same way New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Uh, if, if I get a question, let's say, um, and we have a, a opportunity on the on when it comes to the webinars of if, if Feds have specific questions, they can send them in. Um, just to, you know, and, and there's an email address there, and I'll be more than happy to take to check it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our, uh, our fans are actually, you know, a pretty collaborative group out there. You know, we, uh, as, and as you well know, we'll, we'll frequently get some interesting pop-up questions that, that we're able to research and, uh, and, and get the answer. So folks, if, uh, if you're, if you're listening to this and, and you know of a state that, that we didn't mention, hit us up at serving this to serve. We'll make sure that we include that in, uh, in all of our messaging going forward. Well, Brother Ed, once again, I have to thank you for uh, for what you're doing for the federal community and for us at Serving Those to Serve. Uh, and folks, that is a wrap. We will see you at the next podcast. Don't miss that one. I, seriously, 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 don't miss that one because we're going to be talking about uh, Roth conversions directly from TSP, and there's something you absolutely need to know on that Yeah, before you do that. So, we are serving this to serve. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast on our YouTube channel and Spotify. Uh, remember, remember to share it with your friends and people who aren't your friends. Help them out. Uh, check us out on Twitter and LinkedIn. Do not forget those live webinars that I just mentioned. And, you know, check us out every week. Uh, just go to STWS website. That's stwserve.com. You'll see the blue uh, webinar button. It turns red when you hit it. Takes you right to uh, our menu page. Sign up for one, sign up for all. Ed will come to you, basically. So, as I've said for years, you can learn about this stuff in your buddy slippers. Uh, one of our newest uh, additions, Caitlin, uh, came up with a great phrase. I wish I'd thought of it, which is, we have removed the commuting requirement to uh, to learn about your benefits. So, uh, share all this with, uh, with everyone you know. They will thank you for it. Uh, be sure to read Ed every week in the Fed Zone. That's fedhagenzone.com. And don't forget to sign up for that weekly serving so the best of the Fed stars will be coming straight to you. So to wrap it up, for Ed, the crew of Serving This Serve, and me, Dan Sype, I will say, as I always do, luck, got speed, and above all, remember, it's your Fed life. Make it a great one because you deserve it. Stay well, everybody. We are out. Thank you for listening to the Fed Life Podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available.
The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of serving those who serve or Raymond James. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Securities offered through Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Raymond James Financial Services Advisors Incorporated. Serving those who serve is not a registered broker or dealer and is independent of Raymond James Financial Services. Raymond James is not affiliated and does not endorse the opinions or services of any of the quoted professionals or their respective firms. Any opinions are those of Dan Seip and not necessarily those of RJFS or Raymond James. This case study is for illustrative purposes only. Individual cases will vary. Raymond James is not affiliated with and does not endorse the opinions or services of the quoted professionals or their respective organizations. Neither Raymond James Financial Services nor any Raymond James Financial Advisor renders advice on tax issues. These matters should be discussed with the appropriate professional. Investing involves risk and you may incur a profit or loss regardless of strategy selected, including diversification and asset allocation.